Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Backyard Gardening. Today we're gonna to talk about herbs. There's many reasons why you should grow your own herbs. One is cost. Do you know how much it costs to buy like three little pieces of rosemary in the grocery store? Like three bucks. You can buy a plant for that and be set for life. A lot of these herbs that we're gonna talk about today are perennial, so they'll come back every year. Buy them once or even buy them from seed. A packet of seeds like a buck. I'm gonna show you some tips. I'm gonna show you some space saving ideas so that you can even do it on a patio. Herbs are also great for cooking and all the herbs I'm using today are culinary herbs. You can grow them in your windowsill, on your patio, wherever you can find a sunny spot, you can put some herbs. Go ahead and hit subscribe, please. We're gonna be doing a ton of videos over the summer. You can watch the garden grow. You can grow your garden with me and I'm gonna share a bunch of tips that I learned along the way. So, if you like the video at the end, or now, give me a thumbs up. Let's get this party started. Oh, herbs. I'm gonna go over all kinds of herbs with you today. That one right there is mint. What do you use mint for? I use it in mint juleps. I also put it in my um, coleslaw. It gives a little freshness to it. In this wee little terracotta pot, we got some purple basil. In this cup, purple basil, all raised from seed, by the way. And what else do we have here? Let's say purple basil from seed. We're gonna transplant these so that they can grow and, and ready to plant. This is sweet basil, again, from seed. Seeds don't cost hardly anything. And what is this? Um, cilantro. I have some cool tips about cilantro coming up your way too. And there's chives, the ultimate perennial. You plant that once, you're good. Here's dill. That's an annual. It has to come back every year. Now this sad sack right here is my thyme. My beautiful wife watered it and tried to kill it. Right there is French tarragon. And I put it in there with thyme and rosemary, this big old honker right here, only to find out they don't belong together. So you live, you learn. So I'm transplanting them all. Now in our uh, pots that we use, they have to have good drainage. That's just no way around it. So I'm gonna drill at least three to four holes in every one of these containers. They have to have drainage. No way around it, peeps. So I'm going to give some of these their own container and some not. This is some purple basil that I'm going to put into these peat moss cups. They come out of that wee little terracotta thing there. So this is potting soil, not garden mix. That's super important. And you need to leave it loose so those little tender roots can grow. Once these little purple basils grow big enough to transplant, I'll probably leave them in the pots. The pots are biodegradable. I'll just tear the bottom off so the roots can get out the bottom. Purple basil also is great for pollinators. They have this awesome flower that really um, the pollinators can't resist. So grow as much purple basil as you can and it's going to be a good companion plant. Another one of my favorites is sweet basil as seen here. So when you're taking it out, put your fingers just like this to support the plants. Tap the bottom beat the crap out of it if you have to until it comes out. You can see how, how deeply the roots have already gotten down in there. You're going to gently, and I mean gently, as best, best you can, pull them apart. And we're going to put dirt in these cups, create a little well, and we're going to pull them apart. Look how many in that bundle I'm going to get out of this. It's ridiculous. That's probably 20 cents worth of seeds. And I'm going to get $100 worth of plants. Basil is one of the easiest to grow as well. So once we get them separated, we are going to put them in there. Now, if, if there's a couple of them that are together that are super small like this, plant them together, who cares? We're gonna use them as companion plants for tomatoes anyway. Basil really does uh, good things for tomatoes. The smell helps keep away pests like aphids and stuff like that. They also um, do something in the soil. I don't know what it is, but they help your tomatoes produce more as well. Now, what are you going to do with all this basil that you're growing? Well, first off, keep planting it throughout the year. It's called succession planting. 
because once it bolts, which means it flowers, then you're not going to eat it anymore. So we're going to pinch them off too at the top later when they get bigger, and that's going to create big old bushes. So we're going to have a surplus of basil around here, but it's great. You can use sweet basil for things like pesto, and you can freeze pesto, oh, by the way. You can use it in pizza, marinara sauce, all kinds of good stuff. Plus, I'm going to dry a bunch of it to use over the winter. I'm going to hang them, dry them. I'm going to show you how to do that, too. Another reason to subscribe and keep keep tabs on what we're doing here. And because, you know, fresh herbs taste so much better. So I just added some organic um, garden fertilizer, and that's going to mix it in. I got the pot that I'm going to plant these herbs in half full. And so I'm going to put these directly on top of what I just mixed. This is Italian oregano. Now this box, because it's so big, I am going to have three different herbs in it, which is also a space saver, as long as they cohabitate in a friendly manner. And these do. So what you want to do now, now that I put it in there, see where my finger is? You want to just fill it up to that level, the level of dirt that was in the pot. You don't want to bury them down too much. So we're just going to pack in dirt around it, lightly pack it in. This is an established plant, 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 English. So you can actually pack it down a little bit more than you would like seedlings. However, we're going to fill it with dirt and we're going to fill it up around, like I said, to that level. This is parsley that I also grew from seed. All three of these, they like full sun and they also like moist dirt. And just like with the other one, oh, here's my second one because I've already split this once. So I have two little groupings from the same initial seed planting. And I'm gonna put the dirt around just like I did the other one, just up to the current level of dirt where it was before. As I was saying, these three herbs that I'm putting in here cohabitate nicely. And they all have the same watering requirements and the same sunlight requirements. Super important. When we get to French tarragon, you'll see why that one is a snooty little herb that needs its own space. However, these three are easily grown and friendly. And oregano is also a perennial. Who knew? Which means next year it will come back. That's pretty awesome too. What we'll do in the fall is we will just trim it back and then remember that it's there. We're gonna, my wife's making up these little wine bottle cork signs, so I'll know that's oregano. Now I had two little wee basils that were left over from when I was repotting the sweet basil, and uh, we're not gonna let them go to waste. We're gonna put them right in here. Because like I said, all three are easy to grow. All three have the same sunlight requirements and watering requirements. Pretty cool. Space saving ideas. So now we're gonna take them outside and give them a little drink ado. So I have them out here in the sun. And you wanna be careful because this soil is super loose. That's why I'm not using a hose. I'm using a just a really small mouthed watering can. And the reason for that is so I don't bury those babies up, those baby uh, basils up. Plus it'll, if you use a hose, it'll just create a mudslide and bury everything. So you want to give them a good solid drink and then they're good to go. So here's a big old pot that I put rocks in the bottom. If you recall, I already drilled three holes in it, but I'm going to fill this with rock at the bottom for drainage purposes, because like everything else, it needs drainage. We're going to put in dirt and then I already put in, no, I didn't, I'm doing it now. I'm putting in some more of that organic fertilizer, but I'm just going to mix it in loosely. This is slow release, the dry stuff. So it's gonna feed that plant for quite a bit. And we're gonna put mint in here. Look at this beauty. Mint, what are you gonna do with mint? How about a mint julep? How about mint in your tea? Oh yeah, mint and sun tea, they go together really well as brood tea. So I'm gonna take it out, put it in here. Again, we are only gonna fill it up to around where the original soil level was on the plant. Besides being easy to grow, you want this to be in its own container. Here's another tip. Mint will take over everything. If you don't have it contained in a container and you put it in your garden, 
within one season, maybe two, that's all you will have in your garden. It'll outgrow every other thing in there and it'll push everything out and you can, good luck getting rid of it. But if you keep it in a container, then you get to enjoy the beautiful thing that is mint. So good. So we're gonna put this outside. Um, I put it on the front porch just for now because it's sunny side of the house. We're gonna give it a good solid drink, soak it until the water comes out the bottom. That way you know you got a good soak. And it's gonna take off and do wonderful things. Mint's one of those things you can't hardly kill. So if you don't think you have a green thumb, think again. You're gonna be the best mint grower on the planet. Give it a try. Back in here, in the kitchen, it's it's a little weird it's very very windy outside so i'm having to do this indoors more purple basil love me some purple basil it also tastes good and it's great to use in foods um just research what can i eat with basil so i put them all in those little cardboard pots that you saw me do earlier but this time i'm going to put them in this container just to keep them upright and because i have to i'm out of space in my window so i have to take them outside so I'm putting a paper towel down on this other container just so the soil doesn't clog up or run through, but the paper towel will still allow it to drain. And what we're going to do with this one, after I put in some more of the um, fertilizer and mix it in, just like I do with every single container pot that I plant. So everything you see me plant from now on that's ready for its own uh, forever home is going to get the same treatment. Now, in this one, I believe we're going to do tarragon. Yep, there's the little uh, wine bottle cork. We're going to put tarragon. Let me tell you about fussy little tarragon. Once you get it in here, and I have two plants, I'm putting them separately. Um, this is their forever home. You can never do anything else with this except fertilize it once you get the dirt in. They do not like their roots disturbed at all. I'm hoping because... They're still so wee that they're going to grow into this and be fine. Even if a bird was to peck into the soil looking for bugs, they would die almost the next day. So, we're going to put this in full sun. These are also perennials, so in the fall we'll cut them back, dry out those herbs, and they'll be good to go. Now in this big old honker here, I'm going to put rosemary. You see I'm doing the same treatment. But rosemary, it um, requires a larger pot. So it's going to get one. And because this is a perennial too, we're going to trim it throughout the year. It's going to get bushier and bushier, and it'll come back beautiful as ever in the spring. And in the fall, we may just take some clippings, and I'll show you how to do that because I just learned that trick. And we'll make four new rosemary plants. We can either keep them or give them away. Bam. How easy is this so far? Easy peasy. Now this is dill. I kind of forgot that I had it sitting to the side. So I'm going to throw a few more herbs in here. I almost forgot this step. Oops. But I remember it so we're good to go. This is going to be their forever home for dill. A dill is also an annual, not a perennial. So we're also going to put in here coriander or cilantro. Here's the deal with cilantro. It's a cool weather crop. Who knew? I thought I always associate it with Mexican food thinking it liked the heat. But it really doesn't. When it gets super hot, it's going to bolt and flower, which is why you really want to do succession planning with this too. I will be planting cilantro throughout the year. Again, because I got babies in here, I'm using that little bitty uh, watering can so I don't cause a mudslide and knock these suckers over. I'm just keeping them in that pot for now, uh, like I said, to keep them upright and in the sun. My tarragon. They're in their forever home, so have a wonderful life. I ran out of water, so now I can get the big jug out. And again, these are established plants, and they're bushy and short. I'm not going to knock them over. This is the rosemary solid drink. And then you can leave it alone. Rosemary doesn't mind drying out a little bit before you water it again. So I'm giving it a really good watering, and then we're going to let it dry a little bit. Oh, there's some camera action that I really thought I deleted. Finally, our last herb is chive. 
I'm going to do a sumo squat right in front of here because, you know, hey, I have no shame in my game. We're going to put a hole inside that hole. Even though this is in my 4x4 garden, we're still going to put a little bit of that fertilizer in there and mix it around. Then, very carefully, these are the chives that I raised from seed. We're going to remove them and put them in here. And again, only bury them to the top of the soil level that it was already accustomed to. These chives will come back every year, bigger, better, and stronger. And next year, they're gonna have these purple flowers that will attract pollinators, really good bees. Once I get all this dirt around it and in, do you see this little round cardboard ring? That came in a new pot and pan set that we bought, and I thought, hey, I'm gonna keep that for the garden. Why? Because I'm forgetful. In the fall or the winter, I don't want to like turn over the soil and disrupt this because this is going to come back every year. It's its forever home. So that little thing's going to remind me, don't dig here. There's chive, dummy. So the chives are in. Every year they get better. Chives are perfect. Scrambled eggs, potato salad. Chives have a million and one uses too. Trust that. And at the end of the season or whenever during the season that we can harvest some herbs, I'm going to show you recipes on how to cook what we grow. Yet another reason to subscribe and watch this. Keep an eye on me. We'll see what I'm doing. I hope you really do grow a garden with me. And um, also, please leave me a comment about what herbs you've had success with and what herbs you haven't had success with. And I'll see if I can get back to you with some good information on how to grow them better. Until then... We'll see you in episode three, which is going to be all about peppers, sweet and hot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget my thumbs up and have a wonderful, wonderful day.